All right, here we go. Get rid of that little window there that pops up. Okay, get out of there. And uh, we're just going to talk about one more little aspect of ionic bonding, and that is adding um, these things we call the polyatomic ions. So we've got our old friend here, the periodic table. Again, you're always going to have the periodic table handy with you. Again, just to review real easily, ions formed out of this column are going to have a plus one charge. Ions formed out of column two are going to have a plus two charge. Ions formed out of column 13 are going to have a plus three charge. Those are our cations. Remember, cation is a word for a positive ion. Positive ion. Our potential anions, anion equals a negative ion. Our potential anions are going to be out of column 17. They would all have a minus one charge. Column 16, they would all have a minus 2 charge. And column 15, they would all have a minus 3 charge. Okay? So those are simple, basic binary compounds. Again, we're not concerning ourselves with the transition metals at this point. They're a bit more complicated than we want to get into. All right. Um, the last thing we need to consider is the fact that there are a special type of ion, ions um, in which groups of atoms are covalently bonded to each other but they have a charge, and we call these polyatomic ions. And they're important in chemistry, uh, and they're easy to work with. Um, we treat them just like any old ions. They have charges. Um, and the problem is that you've got to do a little bit of memorization. So I'm going to tell you the seven most important polyatomic ions and then do a few examples. The most important polyatomic ions in chemistry, and again, the only way you know these Periodic table can't help you. The way you know these is by memorizing. Let's see. Uh, let's start it off with one called the ammonium ion. I'll give you the name first. So every polyatomic ion has a name. You've got to know the name. Ammonium is the name of a polyatomic ion. Its formula is NH4. It has a nitrogen and four hydrogens covalently bonded to each other. The key is it has a plus charge. So from our perspective, an ammonium ion behaves exactly like a sodium ion. Both have a plus one charge. Okay, that's ammonium. Ammonium is the most popular uh, positive or uh, polyatomic ion. It's the only one you need to know. Um, the rest of the polyatomic ions are negatively charged. They're anions. Well, let's see. Let's start with bicarbonate. You may have heard of bicarbonate. Okay, bicarbonate is a polyatomic ion with the formula HCO3, and it has a minus one charge. Okay. Next comes carbonate, or carbonate. It is CO3 with a minus two charge. Okay, don't get bicarbonate and carbonate confused. They sound similar, they have similar formulas, but they are different. Um, let's see, working in alphabetical order, see if I can do that. Um, we come along with hydroxide. Hydroxide, a very important polyatomic ion, particularly in acids and bases. Hydroxide has the formula of OH, and it has a minus one charge. Next in alphabetical order is nitrate. Nitrate. Okay. Nitrate. Surprisingly, it contains nitrogen. Its formula is NO3 with a minus one charge. Okay. Up next in alphabetical order is phosphate. Phosphate. You're not surprised that phosphate contains phosphorus. It also contains oxygen. Its formula is PO4, and it has a minus three charge. And finally, wrapping out what I call our big seven is sulfate. You're not surprised that sulfate contains sulfur. Sulfate has the formulas SO4 and a minus 2 charge. Okay. So these are the polyatomic ions, the important polyatomic ions. There are many others, but these are the seven most important. Um, ammonium, NH4 plus, bicarbonate, HCO3 minus. This one is sometimes called hydrogen carbonate. There isn't a movement to try to change the name, but... It's hard to get old dogs like me and others to drop bicarbonate for hydrogen carbonate. Um, 
carbonate with a CO2, CO3 with a minus 2 charge, hydroxide OH with a minus 1 charge, nitrate NO3 with a minus charge, phosphate PO4 three minus, with a 3 minus charge, and sulfate finally with a minus 2 charge. These are your polyatomic ions, and the only way to know, know them is to sit down and do whatever it takes to memorize them. Okay? After you use them enough, you no longer have memorized them, you just know them. But for beginning chemistry students, you've got to memorize them. Okay? Nobody was born with the knowledge of the polyatomic ions. Okay? You also need to develop a critical eye to look for the pattern of the formula. So seeing NH4 or seeing HCO3 or seeing OH- or seeing NO3. That'll become obvious later on. So now, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's uh, do some uh, practice with these. Someone says, I have a compound named, so the, so the game we're going to play is I'm going to give you a name and then we're going to try to write the formula. Sodium hydroxide. Let's start with that. Somebody says, I've got a compound named sodium hydroxide. Oops. What am I writing here? Sodium hydroxide. Okay. First of all, the IDE ending tips me off that I have a compound. Um... I think about that, and I recognize the name hydroxide, I recognize sodium, I know it's an ionic compound, and the formula is going to be simply what? Well, a couple of strategies here. Let me, do, let me get my green pen. Okay. I look at my periodic table. Sodium is in column one. I know sodium is going to be plus one. So I've got sodium plus one. Okay. Um, hydroxide. I've memorized my polyatomic ions. Hydroxide is OH and a minus one charge. Here's a lovely match. Sodium hydroxide. The formula for sodium hydroxide is going to be one sodium with one hydroxide, NaOH. There's the formula for sodium hydroxide. Try another one. How about sodium carbonate? All right. We'll try the same procedure. Again, we look at the periodic table. Sodium is in column one. Sodium always has a plus one charge. Carbonate. Using our memories, carbonate, CO3 with a minus 2 charge. Now we look at this and say, how can I take a plus 1 and a minus 2 ion and put them together? Again, I know that ionic compounds have to have a neutral combination of ions. So the simplest way to do this is to put two sodiums together. Two sodiums, each with a plus 1 charge, gives me a total charge of plus 2. And they exactly balance one carbonate with a minus 2 charge. The formula for sodium carbonate is Na2CO3. Continuing on, <clears throat> let's stay in the sodium vein. So we'll now talk about sodium phosphate. Sodium phosphate, again, we've got sodium. I hope everybody can very quickly write sodium as plus one, always forms plus one uh, ion. Phosphate, again, your memory, phosphate. You've memorized your polyatomic ions. Phosphate is PO4. Sorry. PO4 with a minus 3 charge. Again, we're looking for the simplest way to take a plus 1 and a minus 3 and put them together. The formula for sodium phosphate is going to be Na3PO4. We need three sodiums, each with a plus 1 charge, to give us a total charge of plus 3 on the cations to balance the minus 3 on the anion, the formula is Na3PO4. Let's do a few more examples. Yeah, maybe it's time to change color. What color do you like? Let's go to blue, okay? Um, calcium sulfate. Hmm, okay, calcium. Look at the periodic table. Calcium is in what column? Lo and behold, it's in column two. Two valence electrons. We know that everybody in column two is gonna form a plus two ion, so calcium is going to be plus two. Sulfate, using my memory, I've memorized my polyatomic ions. Sulfate is SO4, and another critical thing I have to remember is that it has a minus two charge. Once I look at that, I look at this and say, this is a pretty nice match. I've got a calcium with a plus two charge. I've got a sulfate with a minus two charge. The formula for calcium sulfate is going to be CaSO4. One calcium with one sulfate. Okay. Um, let's try calcium hydroxide. What's this situation look like? Again, calcium stays the same. Calcium, column two, 
plus two ion hydroxide. I've memorized my polyatomic ions, OH minus. How's the, what's the simplest way to put those together? I've got a plus two and a minus one. I hope everybody can see that I need two of the negative ones to balance one of the plus twos. So I write the formula. Now I've got to be a little careful. I need to show that I have two hydroxide ions. So here I use a math trick. I use a parenthesis. I put the OH inside the parentheses and I put the two as a subscript outside the parentheses. The two outside the parentheses here is telling me that I've got two hydroxides, each with a minus one charge. So the total charge from the two hydroxides is minus two. That exactly balances the plus two from the calcium. So the use of parentheses in, in chemical formulas is a lot like the use of parentheses in our, your math courses. Well, do a few more examples. How about if we have calcium phosphate? What's that going to look like? Again, calcium plus 2 phosphate, using our memory, minus 3. Now I've got the challenge of having a plus 2 and a minus 3. If you're playing with this for a little while, what you do is you say, hey, I need three calciums, each calcium with a plus two charge. So three calciums are going to give me a plus six charge. Um, to balance that, I'm going to need two phosphates. And so I'll put the phosphate inside the parentheses, and I'll put a two outside to represent that I have two phosphates. Let's look at this one real carefully. I've got three calciums, so I've got a total positive charge of plus six. I've got two phosphates. Each phosphate has a minus three charge. I have a total charge there of minus six. Again, that satisfies my, satisfies my criteria that the overall charge is zero. Okay? Um, maybe one more example. Let's think we had aluminum. What if we had aluminum nitrate? What's the situation? We haven't used nitrate yet. Look at our periodic table. Aluminum is there in column 13. We know that the elements in column 13 have three valence electrons. Therefore, they are going to form ions with a charge of plus three. So we know aluminum is going to be plus three. Okay. We've got nitrate. Again, we've memorized that. Nitrate, NO3, and it has a minus one charge. Again, the formula and the charge are critical when you're playing with the polyatomic ions. Aluminum nitrate, what are we going to end up getting? Let's take a peek. For every aluminum, aluminum is plus 3, nitrate is minus 1. I hope it didn't take you too long to figure out that you're going to need, for every one of those plus 3 aluminums, you're going to need 3 nitrates to balance it out. Notice we use the parentheses and the 3 outside to say 3 nitrates. Each nitrate is a minus 1. The aluminum is plus 3. So if we play the same game we played up here, the aluminum is charge of plus 3. The 3 Nitrates are minus 3, and again, plus 3, minus 3 equals 0. Ionic compounds have to add up to be 0 charge. Um, we could work a bunch of other examples, but I think uh, I've given you enough information to be able to work through these. Uh, again, can't emphasize enough that you've just got to sit down and do whatever it takes to memorize these. Um, and if you do that now, you're going to be successful. And before you know it, you'll know these ions without um, uh, really thinking about it. All right. Good. In the next one, we'll start with formulas and go to names. That's a really easy one.